NCRP Productions presents Fallout Beyond the Radwood Vale Two Towns Episode Zero Setting and Character Introduction Hello, my name is Ty. We'll be doing Fallout RPG. We're going to start off with a introduction of the setting, of the tone, and kind of what to expect with our campaign. The setting will be taking place in the year 2281. For those who are fans of the Fallout game, this is the same year that the events of New Vegas are happening. The location for our campaign will be the Lost Coast of California, the far northwestern tip, an area shrouded in mist and radioactive fallout. While not directly hit by the bombs, this creeping sickness of radiation has slowly corrupted and morphed this land. It has been lost to most of the civilized world for the past 200 years. Mere rumors, trickles, and tales coming down the old 101 of a place untouched by fire, but crawling with mist. Our characters in this campaign will be all from the same settlement in the Lost Coast, a settlement called Two Towns. Two Towns is unique as it is built on a bridge that strides between two towns. Settlers forge this village in order to help protect themselves from outside monsters, raiders, cannibals, feral ghouls, and even the dreaded trolls. I want you to picture a bridge, metal scaffolding, faded green paint, covered in a wooden shanty town. Structures go high, stretching to the top of the gantry. Structures go out to either side, and structures go below, wrapping around the entire circumference of this bridge. 238 people call this town home, crowded into a very small area. Two Town's main source of income is lumber, a rarity in the apocalypse, for most structures have to be built out of salvaged metal, or in the case of certain settlements in the NCR, adobe mud. Two Towns manages to achieve this by salvaging and recovering mill parts from the nearby lumber mills. Below, on the underside of the bridge of Two Towns, is the village mill. It's pride. It has a system of pulleys and gantries to pick logs from the river that float down from further upstream, where prospecting loggers will venture up for weeks at a time, fall lumber into the river, and have it float down for the village to pick up. This lumber has made two towns very profitable, and merchants as far as Hagen's Pass and as far north as Market City, come here to trade. This brings a great deal of news and rumors from the outside world. Our players, who have made their home here in two towns, can hear things. They hear that the trolls of the eastern hills have burned three settlements to the ground, and they can hear news of the Colossus of NCR ever creeping towards their southern borders. The tone for this campaign will be bleak. Fallout is a setting of survival, horror, and humor despite the pain and despite the fear. Combat will be deadly, it will be brutal, and people may die. We'll now talk a little bit about the world outside of two towns. The Lost Coast, while isolated to the NCR and what they would call the civilized world, is it itself not without a bit of civilization. There are several clans that make up the Lost Coast, all ruled by a high chieftain. The high chieftain is voted upon every six years. Now, the difference between a settler and a raider might seem distinct. In the Lost Coast, the line is far more blurred. One man's raider is another man's Minutemen. And settlements have been known to go to war with each other from time to time. And that is the importance of the Lost Coast moot. To hash out differences and to settle any disputes through ritualized combat. There is no direct form of government. The towns govern themselves. The purpose and role of the High Chieftain is simply to arbitrate if needed. But even his word is nothing more than a recommendation. The two towns is part of this, let's call it confederation, for lack of a better term. Do you have any questions in regards to that? So the high chieftain is democratically elected. 
they're an arbiter. Yeah, but they and there's that. multiple high chieftains. No, there's only one. So, oh, right. So there, how many clans are there? Ah, good question. There are thirteen. And two towns is not a clan. It is. Okay. And there's one high chieftain for all thirteen clans. Correct. And they mediate between the clans. Correct. So the size of the clans only in like the twenties and thirties because there's only two hundred thirty eight people in town and there's no, thirteen no. clans or do these go no, outside? No, the entire of the town, town is a clan. Okay, so okay, our entire two towns, which is called okay, we are from the two town clan. Yeah, that's is yeah. two hundred and thirty okay. plus people in this town and in, in just us. Yep. But there's another town, which is another clan that has yeah. however many and, people. And we're, we don't currently have the high chieftain, or do we? We that's do not. Yeah, you yeah. do not. There are thirteen clans. The current High Chieftain is Telwing Arch. He hails from the Rock, a small settlement farther up the coast. What makes this strange is that this is the first time the Rock has ever had a High Chieftain, for they are so small, their influence is quite limited, which speaks to the political skill of Telwing Arch. Would we know, does he have a reputation for violence? Is he, how do, how do, what is, is the he common, a peacemaker? Yeah, what's the common Yeah, what is he known as? He's an enigma. Mm-hmm. As in, people aren't really, like, he didn't have much of a presence before the last moot. Hmm. And in hmm. fact, most people had never heard of him until the moot was convened, and he put his own hat and represented the rock. And he'd never know. Is no- he from the rock? Where was he born? But no one knows. <laughs> we certainly wouldn't. Yeah, you certainly wouldn't. Have you seen his birth certificate? The, I the, seen the it. rock, by the way. <laughs> the rock, by the way, is uh, it's very defensible because the oceans are slightly higher in the in Fallout because of the new right. apocalypse, so and so Tree Dad Head it, yeah. at high tide can't be accessed. You mentioned that there is some wars or frequency of wars. Is there a current tension in the air? That there's a possibility of war, or are we cl- are we so close to we just yeah. have the move? We're in the system that. now. We're beyond that. That's what's keeping us from war is the moot. As of right now, Two Towns does not have any specific tension with any other tribe or clan, I should say. There's two very influential families that lead the town, and they're rivals, and that's the Scots and the Dells. Yep. The leader of Two Towns has always either been a Scot or a Dell. Glenn, your family, the Loggers, are the Scots. Oh. You're part of the Scots. The Scots run the mill. The Dells run the market quarter and the bar, which are the two main sources of income for this town. Now, there are other families. They're not just the Scots and the Dells, but they're the two big ones. Is there, like, bad blood between the two? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Romeo like, and Juliet stuff. Fist fights? Correct. They haven't gotten along for 200 years. Not everyone who lives in Humboldt is part of the 13 clans. There exists a segment of society called the Wild Men. The Wild Men are degenerate, cannibalistic marauders who inhabit the hills of the Lost Coast. Descendants of people who have made a living surviving off the land itself and in their independence. And the apocalypse has only magnified these traits. And after 200 years, little remains of their humanity. And they are a constant threat to the 13 clans. Do they outnumber us? No one knows how many there are. Despite them throwing themselves against your walls and dying, their numbers never seem to cease. A couple interesting things about the outside world. As I said earlier, this takes place in the year 2281. The current war between Caesar's Legion and the NCR is happening, and soon will culminate in the second battle of Hoover Dam. However, years ago, we had the first and last NCR Brotherhood War. The Brotherhood of Steel on the West Coast is effectively destroyed. And while some may consider the war to still be ongoing, it is nothing more than NCR ranger squads delving into Brotherhood of Steel bunkers and wiping out the remnants of their order. And now we'll meet the players who are going to be living in the village of Two Towns. Hi, I'm David. I will be playing Alexander Steele from the Brotherhood Initiate of Elder Abraham. Lex has spent the last two years in two towns after a terrible incident of his compound being raided by the NCR and fleeing on Vertibird with his remaining siblings. Sadly, due to his terrible luck, the bird he picked just ran out of fuel, took a hard nosedive into the woods, and he was able to crawl out as the only survivor that he believes. 
He passed out into the river and made his way downstream where he was picked up by some of the locals of Two Town. He's been living as the town blacksmith and armorer, trying to find his way out and to recover from his wounds. He's heard no recent news about what's going on with his people, but he is eager to find a way out. He looks and appears as a 20-year-old young man with a few scars and bruises. You can see that he has tan skin from sitting in front of the forge, specifically a lot more tanned across his face due to him practicing with his handy laser pistol. Hmm. He has darker brown hair, very clean cut along the sides and the part up top slipped back. He looks a little bulky, probably because he just wears multiple layers of clothes, but he's commonly seen around with this dirty stained white shirt and some brown overalls. You can see peaks of like rotted orange underneath that white shirt as it pushes through. Hey, it's Barry. I am going to be running Dr. Philip Ash. Phil for short, most people know him as Dr. Phil. He is 180 years of age and decided he got frustrated with the direction the NCR was going as they started coming to power and continuously started moving farther and farther north. He has been here in two towns for 100 years and has now become somewhat accepted, even with his ghoulish background, as the town doctor. He tends to work more for the Scottswood family than for the others, spending most of his time, at least his doctoring hours, down in the mill, fixing the broken and torn limbs that happen quite often in the mill. When you see Dr. Phil, you're going to notice that he is six foot tall, very thin, 175 pounds, ashen gray skin. He doesn't cover himself with hair, so he is bald from top to bottom. He's generally seen in rough clothing. A lot of times he'll have a smock until it gets too torn and ripped and then he'll have to wait till somebody brings one into town to trade for. Hi everyone, my name is Glenn. I'll be running Ezekiel Scottswood. He goes by Zeke. He's part of the Scottswood family. They run the lumber mill in town. Zeke, he's uh, born and raised in two towns. He doesn't know anything else, although he yearns for the outside world. Pulling in the lumber coming down the river, he can sense something is out there. It calls to him. He knows where he is needed. Him and Dr. Phil have been around each other for most of Zeke's life. They seem to get along very well. Zeke is a big burly man. Though he is in his early 20s, he is, he's he got thinning brown hair and a receding hairline. Not a bulging gut, but he seems to like to waste his, his nights away in the bar across town. And he likes to wear his, uh, his classic overalls with a white undershirt with some faded blue markings on it. Zeke is around 5'10", 230 pounds. Hi, this is Josh. I'm playing Patrick Easterly, known also as Pat, Patty, or Paddington even, to his favorite customers. I'm a traveling salesman from the NCR. Although the traveling part is a little bit of a misnomer because I've seemed to set up shot in the town of two towns. I'm a fairly meager man, about 5'7", of light build, and uh, I tend to wear typically your outdoorsman traveling clothes. Sun-bleached, blonde-haired man with a little bit of a tan who seems to have traveled here and there, but perhaps that's just for the image. I uh, carry a shotgun. I've set up shop here within town. I've made quite a lot of friends, at least I like to think, but perhaps the townsfolk would disagree. And those are our four adventurers that will be wandering out into the wasteland of the Lost Coast. Thank you for joining us on another NCRP Productions podcast. We couldn't do this without you, so please like and subscribe everywhere we're found, including YouTube, Facebook, Anchor, Google, Apple, Spotify, and other great podcast sites. If you'd like to help us continue making more content, we'd love to have your support on our Patreon. And if you have any feedback for us, please feel free to comment on our podcasts or email us directly at ncrpproductions at gmail.com. And we'd like to give a special shout out to our current patrons, our Siegson Employees of the Month, F.S., Michael H., Michael P., and our Breaker of Seals, The Jones, Frank H., Christopher C., Matthew K., and The Lab. Trademarked. Thank you all. We truly, truly appreciate it.